if you are here, it's because you want to know more about this topic, so let's go. The struggle of the civil rights movement, which began in 1950, to obtain in law and in practice an end to inequalities between white and black Americans is long. Desegregation is one of President John Kennedy's struggles in the early 1960s. The daily life of the black American population was made up of inequalities and discrimination in many areas. The struggle and contestation of the civil rights movements ultimately translated into law. Blacks are subject to many forms of discrimination and exclusion in public places and services. Due to segregationist laws like Jim Crow laws introduced in 1876, Segregation between whites and blacks is also practiced in some theaters and restaurants. So, in 1960, black students in North Carolina, Greensboro, sit in for six months in front of a restaurant before they could be served. It was not until the adoption of the Civil Rights Act signed by President Lyndon Johnson on July 2, 1964, that any form of segregation was prohibited in public places. But mentalities are slower to change than those in some places, requiring continued combat to enforce the Civil Rights Act. In addition, there is also a discrimination in hiring. Discrimination in employment is very real. Some jobs are occupied only by whites and remain inaccessible to blacks. It's the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that puts an end to discrimination in hiring. This law prohibits discrimination based on race, color, religion or sex. It also sets up positive discrimination. Employers must ensure that they reach or maintain hiring codes in favor of blacks. The federal government, since an executive order of March 6, 1961 by President John F. Kennedy, obliges programs financed by the federal government to ensure that employment is not subject to racial discrimination, but in reality, the inequality of opportunities in hiring is very real. And on September 24, 1965, President Johnson signed an executive order ordering companies working with the state to take positive discrimination measures to increase the chances of access to employment for minorities. Since the brown judgment, the brown judgment of the Supreme Court in 1954, school segregation has been prohibit, prohibited but access to university is still impossible in segregationist states. Thus, federal intervention was needed to allow James Meredith, the first black student enrolled at the, at the University of Mississippi, to join the campus in September 1962, supervised by the police. Trozot is calling at Holy Miss University. He was protected by federal agents. In a third part, laws prohibiting mixed unions between whites and blacks lasted until 1967. Indeed, this is the Supreme Court ruling in Loving v. Virginia who declares the ban on mixed marriage unconstitutional. Thereafter, the recognition of the right to vote for blacks was one of the main demands of the American civil rights movement in the 1960 years. In theory, as early as 1964 and the signing of the Civil Rights Act, discrimination in the electoral process was over. But segregationist states prevent this right flag test or taxes. It was not until 6th of August 1965 and the adoption of the Voting Rights Act, which authorized the federal government 
to ensure that blacks can register on the electoral roll, that this gradually becomes a reality for all blacks American. Finally, alpha discrimination in housing is prohibited, it persists in some states because there is no federal provision to verify this prohibition. In 1968, the Fair Housing Act prohibited discrimination in the sale, rental, and financing of housing based on race, color, and religion. Today, segregation and racism persist and new generations are struggling to take a hit.